Some of the greatest English novelists of the 19th century were women, and George Eliot was one of the best and most famous of them. Although George is a man's name, the novelist George Eliot was a woman. Her real name was Mary Ann, or Mary Ann, or Marian, Evans. She used all these three speakings of her forename at various times in her life. During most of the 19th century, women who were well-educated rarely had paid jobs. But many of them enjoyed writing, and they had a lot of time to do it. Some of these women wanted their books to be published so that other people could read them, but there were two problems for women writers at the time. The first problem was that men controlled the publishing companies, and many of these men did not believe that women could write well enough to be published. The second problem was that middle and upper class people thought that it was not respectable for women to have books published. Earning money by writing was like doing a job, and it was shameful for men if people thought that their wives and daughters had to earn money, even if this was not true. At the beginning of the 19th century, there were women who had books published but they usually did this anonymously, their own names did not appear on the cover. On the title pages, these books were often described simply as, by a lady. The six novels of the great early 19th century writer, Jane Austen, including Emma, 1816, Pride and Prejudice, 1813, and Sense and Sensibility, 1811, were all first published anonymously. Another way that women writers overcame the problems at the time, was to use male, pen names, false names, so that the publisher would think the book had been written by a man. If a book became a success and its publisher later found out that it was by a woman, he would not stop printing it. Mary Ann Evans also used this trick of using a male pen name by calling herself George Eliot. But she had another reason for wanting to be anonymous. Mary Ann Evans was born on November 22, 1819, at a farm near Chilverscoton, a village in the county of Warwickshire in the English Midlands. Her father worked as a land agent for a rich family on an estate in that area. From the age of five, Mary Ann lived at various schools, where she became interested in evangelical Christianity. In this kind of religion, the most important thing is to believe in the complete truth of the Bible. Mary Ann certainly believed in this in 1836 when her mother died and she returned home to take care of her father. But around this time she became friends with a couple who were free thinkers, people who did not believe in the truth of Christianity. Soon, Mary Ann's own doubts about religious truth grew strong, and this change of mind caused a bad argument with her father. Things were difficult between them after that. Mary Ann was good at languages and wanted to write, so she started translating books by German free thinkers. The first of these, A Translation of the Life of Jesus by D.F. Strauss, was published anonymously in 1846. Three years later, Mary Ann's father died, and she used some of the money which he left her to travel in Europe, where she read many books and thought a lot about her future. In 1850, she met John Chapman, the publisher of the Westminster Review, a famous magazine which included articles by many serious thinkers. Mary Ann wrote for the magazine and also worked as an unpaid editor for it. In 1854, Mary Ann's translation of Feuerbach's Essence of Christianity was published. In the same year she traveled to Germany with George Henry Lewis, an author with whom she fell in love. When they returned to England, they moved into a house together. Lewis was already married but the marriage was not a success. Though his wife already had several children by one of his friends, Lewis still wasn't able to divorce her. When he started to live with Mary Ann like husband and wife, there was a scandal. For many years, people from their own middle-class society would not meet George and Mary Ann, nor have anything to do with them. It was only when Mary Ann became very famous as a writer that this situation began to change. In 1856, Mary Ann wrote and published the first story of a series which she called Scenes from Clerical Life. It was published using the name George Eliot and many people who would not speak to Mary Ann because of her relationship with Lewis, read it and enjoyed it without knowing who its author was. 
1859, Mary Ann's first full-length novel, Adam Bede, was published using the pen name George Eliot. It too was very successful. Soon after this, a man called Joseph Liggins claimed that he had written Mary Ann's work, and Mary Ann was forced to reveal that she was really George Eliot. Mary Ann's next three novels were The Mill on the Floss, Silas Marna and Romola. These works sold very well and by 1863 Mary Ann was a rich woman and a much admired writer. It was at this time that Mary Ann began writing novels which were concerned with the social problems of her time, publishing Felix Holt, The Radical in 1866, and then in 1869 her greatest book Middlemarch. Middlemarch is, among many other things, about the difficulties encountered by a young, clever, and spirited woman who lived in the male-dominated society of the provincial towns of the 19th century. The famous 20th-century English writer, Virginia Woolf, called Middlemarch one of the few English novels written for grown-up people. Mary Ann's last novel, Daniel Deronda, is also a masterpiece. In Daniel Deronda, the problems of Jewish people in 19th-century English society, and their desire for a homeland, appear as the background to the story of an unhappy marriage. Together with Middlemarch, Daniel Deronda is a very important work in English literature. George Lewis died in 1878, two years after the publication of Daniel Deronda. During his and Mary Ann's relationship, they had mostly been very happy together, and for a time after his death Mary Ann was very unhappy. But in 1880, she married a much younger man, John Walter Cross, who had been a friend of Lewis and herself. The marriage did not last long, however, because Mary Ann died on December 22, 1880. She was buried next to Louis in Highgate Cemetery, London. Mary Ann Evans also wrote some essays and many poems, but it is the outstanding quality of her novels which has established her as one of England's greatest writers. To stay up to date with our latest videos and more short biographies, please make sure to hit on the subscribe button below. And until next time, have a great day.